Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try my best to explain the simplistic way to use the Imperial official in the early game to help boost your economy as quickly as possible. We're going to be playing versus the AI here. I'm going to go through just like the first four or five minutes of using the Imperial official in your economy. I'm going to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, basically what this uh, comes down to is that China doesn't have to get gold by mining for as long as the other races. So we're going to go over to our bushes here. We're going to have one guy build this. These are going to go here, right? We're going to slaughter one of the sheep right away. Build that. Okay. We've got our workers rallied to the goats. Or the sheep, however you choose to call them. We're going to go to nine supply. So we're going to build two workers, and then we're going to build our imperial official. I'm not going to focus too much on my scout. Normally I would focus a lot of attention on my scout, but not this time. So this worker is going to finish. We're going to build our first house. Right? Because we, we can go slow. We can, we can afford to go slow. So we're going to build our first house, and then our official's on the way. We're going to rally the first guy that builds a house to the food because we want eight food, right? We want eight on food. Uh, how many sheep we got? Okay, we'll bring these extra sheep back to the base just so that it's easier. So the official comes out and he's going to instantly get you 20 gold. He well, he only picked up 17 because I had a little bit less than I wanted to. So the we do the first turn in with the official. And then we boost. We use the extra ability of the supervisor to boost our production on this building. So now you see we get 12 food instead of 10, right? But they're still only mining 10 food, so it's just boosting your economy, right? So we're going to build our mine here, and we're going to rally one more worker to the gold. And basically, this lets you be more efficient with your food mining than you normally are when you open with the other sieves because the other sieves need to get gold in a different way. And what we're going to do is we're paying attention here, right? We're picking up the gold. We're taking it back. We're not going to spend too much time on our scout. Pick the gold up. We take it back. We boost the food economy again, right? So we can rally to our wood now. <laughs> and this is not the fastest way to get to the feudal age with your with with China cuz you can get an incredibly fast feudal age with China but this is a very efficient way to get to the feudal age with China and it gets you the imperial official and it stops your buildings from building up an endless supply of tax money that you will never be able to get out of them it's important to start taxing the buildings right away so these guys are going to get us our 50 food for a house, right? And we just pay attention to getting 20 gold on this, right? That's really what we want. Uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We're just looking to see when this gets 20 gold again. And we're continually building workers. With our next 50 food, we'll build a house. Uh, we're actually going to rally the rest of the woodworkers out to where we're going to build the wood drop-off point. But first, we're going to build our second house. And we got a little too much gold here, so we're going to take it, and we're going to get it back here. And we can build our first landmark right now. We are a little late on it. I'm going to just build it wherever. I'm not even going to think about it. But we get our first landmark started at about three minutes. And China builds their buildings 100% faster than the other sieves do. So we don't have to do anything different from the other sieves to get our landmark faster than them. So we have enough for our wood thing now. Uh, can we make it close enough to this to get our Imperial Palace to hit all of them? Maybe. We'll see what happens, right? Oh, we got 20 gold here again. We'll get our 20 gold. Uh, we forgot about our scout because we're trying really hard to focus on this early game here, right? So when we finish this, 
We should have enough gold. We should have enough gold when this Barbican of the Sun finishes to build our second landmark. Okay, so we have 200 gold. We have 200 gold. We don't need to mine gold anymore right now. We can return that. And we can get these guys onto wood. We can get these guys over here. Mine it. Well, I guess we'll finish that tree. It's fine. But we need to boost the food, right? Because we want to start the second landmark as soon as this one finishes. <laughs> oh, oh, we got to get these extra sheep over here. So this is about to finish. And we don't quite have 400 food yet. But you can see how if I had micromanaged the economy a little bit better, we could have started the Imperial Palace very quickly here. And what this does is give us the Song Dynasty bonus of minus 35% production to our villagers. And we're going to hit all three of our production facilities here. We're going to get the gold out of here. And then we'll come and get the gold out of here. And that will continue our gold. And now we'll rally to gold until we have two. Oh, we're not even building workers. And and that that's kind of like my framework for an early game right now. And that makes it pretty easy. And what we do is we save for the wheelbarrow as quickly as possible. We make our archery range or our stable at this point. And we make our blacksmith. This was all a little delayed. This, this was all just a little bit delayed. Because I was trying to explain things. But as, as soon as you get this second landmark started. And then when you have 150 wood. You start the blacksmith. And then you start the archery range after the blacksmith. And you can skip the blacksmith and make two production structures instead. Uh, if you want to skip the blacksmith so that you can get to the third age faster, you can do that. Because it's going to use up your gold to get the, uh, the upgrades. So a lot of the times, if you're deciding you want to tech, you're going to skip the blacksmith at this stage. You're going to make two production structures instead. You're going to make a stable. You're going to make an archery range, or you're going to make an archery range and a infantry uh, barracks, or you're going to make a stable and a barracks. And then you'll continue to get gold. And obviously, if you had wanted to continue teching, you wouldn't have pulled off of the gold at 200 gold. What I'm doing here is more like I'm trying to be super overly aggressive and attack. So I'm going to get upgrades, and I'm going to build battering rams. And yes, I will have way more wood for the rams because I pulled off of the gold to get more wood. And now I'm rallying to the gold. Because we don't need gold until we start the upgrades. And we get enough gold from the Imperial official. And that's kind of what I'm, I've noticed from somebody else that I got to play the game against, which was very nice. Anyways, thank you very much. If you like the video, if you like the stream, please hit us up with the subscribe. Please give us a follow on Twitch. Thank you very much. Good night.